Sunday morning, the cocks have gone back, British summer time is over, and the morning's getting lighter. But I'm gonna have to put bike lights on until March now, because my ride home from work's probably gonna be in the dark. It is Hi. soaking wet. <laughs> it's sunny now, but it's gonna be raining later, so no climbing outdoors today. I'm uh, going to run for about 75-80 minutes over the hills and through the mud and running of course is a good time for reflection and with reflection comes planning um, so I've been doing this job at Swansea University for almost 20 years now which means that I've worked with a lot of people um, a lot of clinical and academic colleagues and because I've been working with them for so long many of them are coming up to retirement now um, and some have retired and some are in the process of retiring I'm always talking to people about this and they often do it gently because we've all put so much work into our work and most of us don't want to just stop dead because we like what we're doing we like what we do so people are tailing off gently maybe because they're getting to that age and they're running out of energy they've paid off their mortgage or in some cases you know as you get older it's harder to maintain health for these very physical jobs by very physical jobs of course i'm referring to surgery because lots of surgeons teach anatomy with us so my colleagues that are gently retiring or looking at retiring or actually retiring let's say they're around 10 years older than me you know maybe a few more years on top of that but you get the idea and that provokes in me the what are we running through there today that provokes in me then oh so i think i'm probably going to be working for maybe another 15 years but what am i going to do with my next 10 years i'm at a different phase in my life you know you spend a lot of your life working towards a goal getting into a job like mine and now I've been in it for a long time what do I do with the, la the last part of it? it sounds strange to say that out loud actually must be the holding cows today if you're lucky going up there or up there? we're going right oh you can't slow down you gotta oh my god you gotta slump through it <laughs> uh, there is much more mud at the top of the hill and it is unavoidable <laughs> so literally running going for a run or going for a walk is the time I get to reflect and to plan because the rest of the time I've got a screen in my face and I've got things to do talking about a screen in my face um, you might have seen this week I had a screen on my face <laughs> I did a short this week which was about uh, mixed reality uh, augmented reality one of those things I've been harping on about for years and the MetaQuest 3 came out the other week and it's relatively cheap 479 quid um, and in that I demonstrated how you can have floating screens have them alongside you know physical things in the lab like a skull wouldn't it be great if we can combine these things for teaching but what I really want what I really want um, is to make these videos 3D stereoscopic maybe not these videos but the anatomy videos <laughs> mud is so much more fun than tarmac um, for the last you know well since I've been doing this job, technology has been a big part of it. I'm interested in technology. I'm interested in how technology can help teaching. I'm interested in how technology can make my life more interesting. Um, my rule of thumb is um, I need to have as many tools as possible because not only can I see how you're supposed to use that tool, but I can also work out how you're supposed to not use or abuse that tool to get it to do things 
nobody else has thought of yet. Ooh. But um, I don't think VR, virtual reality is the future, I think mixed reality is. Certainly in terms of teaching. I don't want to isolate my students, I want them to work together, I want them to be present, but have things added to their presence and my presence. Watch this bit, you want to go to the right, not the left. The left is for the cows, the right is steps. It's very pretty down here. Ooh. So, I'm thinking the next 10 years will be the chance I get to work with the latest technologies like mixed reality technologies. I still don't know if they're going to take off or not. Apple is going to be the big player and big determinant here with their uh, their vision operating system and their vision pro headset which is maybe going to come out next year what i'm thinking is so with mixed reality the difference is you're using both of your eyes to look at um two screens um, which means that everything you're looking at is in 3d just look, as you normally look at the world in 3d and your brain builds up a picture of the world very easily because that's what we've evolved to do right two eyes stereoscopic vision a sense of depth when anatomy gets complicated you need that depth to understand where all the structures are in relation to each other to understand the shapes of things learning gets a lot faster um so like i said i've been faffing around with this for for years but when you put on a mixed reality headset the video doesn't really do it justice you have to do it yourself because you're um, your world then gets things overlaid in it like video panels computer screens whatever whatever you can think of and apple have demonstrated a little bit in their vision pro of how you're going to be able to see some form of stereoscopic video don't know how much depth they're going to be and don't forget we've tried 3d tvs a number of times and they've always failed and are people ever really going to want to wear things on their face until they get small enough to be similar to a pair of glasses I don't know but if it becomes true that you will be able to record stereoscopic videos with the iPhone Pro yet to see how that pans out if you will then be able to play them back with stereoscopic MR headsets like the Vision stuff maybe that opens the door to these stereoscopic videos at last are you okay? So YouTube is a great example of how I use technology to help in teaching and how I'm interested in how technology is working in the world and so on and so on. Um, the next step for that is mixed reality. That poses some problems and some challenges, but we'll come to those in the future if and when it does. Apple are the ones, right, to make things mainstream. People want Apple stuff. I don't know if I'm going to spend three and a half thousand dollars on their headset next year. I doubt it. I'll probably sit and wait and see what the next gen does, but we'll see. Most of the big the CG anatomy apps, complete anatomy, visible body, that sort of thing, that you can buy and render on your phone. And even maybe you do a form of augmented reality on your phone. It is a tiny step, a tiny step for those guys to take their product and put it into an MR headset. Many of them are already doing it in VR. So that will also, that will exist. Hmm, link those two together. You've got your stereoscopic 3D body on one side. You've got my stereoscopic videos on the other side and your rate of learning increases. Who knows how many fold? Look at this. This is what I call a fun Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. It's not ridiculous. This is actually I've done races like this. That's alright, that's just the top of a muddy bit. And I think it's good for strength, right? Oh, oh. Great. They're awesome! <laughs> that be lovely. Oh. That's the top, downhill through the golf course now. A little bit more climbing later. Um there, other than the same old problems of 
3D TVs and sticking goggles to your face for long periods of time. Apart from that, assuming that stuff all gets fixed, there is one other major problem that always happens with this development of new hardware and software is that the hardware is no use without the software and the software doesn't exist without the hardware. So both have to be created at the same time, which is really difficult, right? Um, I've been looking at Apple's development documentation. You know, it's pretty sensible. Um, their idea is pretty sensible. Oh, I've got some confidence in it, but we'll see. But from a content side of things, maybe it's my responsibility to make this stereoscopic, these uh, 3D videos when they become available. So I'll make the software, Apple makes the hardware, and then we'll see what happens, right? I've been talking about this for many, many years, this sort of thing. So maybe it won't even be in place by the time I start thinking about retirement myself. But hey, something fun to work towards, right? Sunday down the golf course. Consider that when I started this job, your smartphone didn't exist. YouTube didn't exist. Online anatomy videos were not a thing. You could buy expensive ones. Uh, CG models of anatomy were not really a thing yet. You know, that you could rotate, they kind of were. There was one that was pre-rendered images that, you, that gave the illusion of rotating and adding and taking layers. But having the complete anatomy in a computer generated model on an app in your phone just hadn't crossed our minds yet. So I'm pretty confident that in 10 years time, what they will do. I'm very confident that in 10 years time, we will not be doing what we are doing now. The only question is, what will it be? Fun times. Sometimes it is a long, muddy climb up to the top, but it's worth it just to see what's up there. Oh, wow. Sometimes you have to do that muddy climb over and over again. 